What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka New York Prepper. In this video, I just want to talk to you guys about what a Russian invasion of Ukraine would look like. So with everything going on the last couple of days, I figured it would make sense to make a video on how Russia could possibly invade Ukraine. And I've talked about some of this in my recent live streams, but I figured I would just put it into a short video. So here's what I think is going to happen if Vladimir Putin decides to invade Ukraine. So first of all, I do believe that they will try to seize control of the entire Black Sea coast of Ukraine. And the way they're going to do that is they're going to come out from Crimea. They're going to move their forces from Crimea. And they're going to seize control of Kherson and Mykolov. And they're also going to go towards Mariupol and Berdyansk. So that this way they can get a land bridge. They might actually go for that land bridge to Crimea first. And then they'll probably go for Kherson and Mykolov. And they'll move their way towards Odessa. They're also going to use amphibious forces to encircle Odessa. Now, there are a lot of Russians in Odessa, so they won't encounter a lot of resistance there in Odessa. And so they'll probably use some uh, amphibious landing on the west side of Odessa combined with uh, ground forces from the east side, and they'll encircle Odessa. And so that's what I think would be the first phase of the attack on Ukraine would be for Russia to seize control of the entire Black Sea coast. And the reason why that's important is because if the West wants to reinforce Ukraine, uh, one of the main ways that the West would reinforce Ukraine would be from the Black Sea. Uh, NATO could land some of their forces on the shorelines here and push into Ukraine. Um, so Russia wants to basically cut off Ukraine from the Black Sea so they can't get resupplied from NATO or Western countries through the Black Sea. Um, so I do believe Russia would try to cut Ukraine off from the Black Sea and also create a land bridge to Crimea. Uh, now at the same time, I also believe that they would make a push to Kiev. I don't think they're going to really go deep into the eastern part of Ukraine. And I'll talk about why in a minute. But I do believe that they would make an immediate push for Kiev. And the reason why is Kiev is extremely close to Russia and Belarus. So why would Vladimir Putin put all his men and machines at risk by trying to cross three or 400 miles across the eastern part of Ukraine towards Kiev or Kiev when he can just drop down from Belarus. And in recent weeks, we've seen a lot of Russian forces massing troops in Gamal. Okay, Gamal is this little town over here in southeastern Belarus. And you can see it's pretty close to Kiev, all right? There's been a lot of Russian forces massing over here in Gamal. And there's no training grounds in this area. So that's what makes it very suspicious that uh, Russia has been deploying a lot of forces to Gamal, all right? This is the last city before the Ukrainian border. So Russia could cross over uh, through Belarus into Ukraine and just head right for Kiev. Now, before they send their ground forces in, they're going to start out with an air campaign and a missile campaign, and they're also going to send paratroopers in. Now, about a week ago, we got word that Russia deployed some paratroopers to Bryansk, and um, that's very concerning because what that means is that they're planning to drop paratroopers into the areas around Kiev to secure critical infrastructure and possibly uh, shut off power to Kiev and seize control of airports and 
uh, other critical infrastructure. So I do believe that Russia's main goal, if they do decide to go into Ukraine, it's not going to be just to take parts of Ukraine. Their goal is going to be to just go right after Kiev and to launch a big siege of Kiev. Okay, they want to surround Kiev and cut Kiev off uh, from the rest of the world and shut the resources off so there's no gas going in, so there's no electricity going in, there's no food going in, there's no water going in. And once they shut everything off and they surround Kiev, it's just a waiting game until Kiev surrenders. So this way they can get their gas turned on, their food coming back in, their water, everything, okay? Now there's uh, an international airport right outside of Kiev in Borisville. And uh, this airport, the United States has been using to ship thousands of Javelin anti-tank missiles. I do believe that some Russian paratroopers will try to seize control of this airport, or they may even just uh, launch airstrikes on this airport. So this way it can't be used by uh, Western countries to uh, ship in uh, arms to help Ukraine fight against Russia. I believe that Russia, like I said, will first use their air force and their missiles to hit critical targets to soften up the Ukrainian military. They're going to hit bases. They're going to hit airports. They're going to hit power plants. They're going to hit uh, any kind of uh, landing strip where planes could land, um, critical bridges, any kind of infrastructure, ammunition depots. They're going to hit all that stuff, okay, with airstrikes, with surface-to-surface -surface missiles, and it's going to be a huge uh, campaign for several days. Russia is going to use their air force. They're going to launch these missiles from standoff ranges within Russian territory, and the whole purpose of that initial strike is going to be to soften up the Ukrainian military and to cripple it. And then also to damage the infrastructure so it makes it easier to surround Kiev and cut it off from the rest of the world and cut off the uh, supplies going in. And then it's just a waiting game, waiting for Kiev to surrender. But I do believe if Putin decides to go into Ukraine, he's going to go right for Kiev. He's not going to waste his time trying to you know, uh, conquer peripheral areas. Yes, they will probably... Uh, simultaneously, they will move into Kharkiv, Sumy, uh, Lugansk, and Donetsk. They're going to go after these areas too, but they're not going to push super deep. They're not going to try to cross the Dnieper River, in my opinion, because the deeper they push, the more the more exposed they're going to be to uh, Ukrainian forces. Okay, and Russia doesn't want to expose their ground forces to. Uh, you know, unnecessary losses. So I don't think they're going to cross, you know, 200 miles of open terrain with tanks all the way from Kharkiv to Kiev. It just doesn't make sense. They'll probably push in just a little bit. They may push in like 25 or 50 miles over the border and they may take control of Kharkiv. They'll take control. Of, they'll annex the Donbass area. Uh, they're going to annex the entire southern coastline and, and take control of the southern coastline, okay, um, get the entire Black Sea coast under their control. But I do not think they're going to push super deep into Ukraine in the center part or even the east central uh, part of Ukraine because it's going to expose them to unnecessary losses because once Putin seizes control of the Black Sea coast. He seizes control of Donetsk, Luhansk, Kharkiv, Sumy. Um, he's going to have the Ukrainian military spread thin between all these areas. And in, in addition to all these areas that he's going to be attacking, he's going to be also going for Kiev and he's going to be also bombing critical infrastructure, critical bases, military bases, ammunition depots, uh, you know, air, airport um, runways and uh, airports and things like that. Their paratroopers are going to try to secure those areas. And that's what he's going to do. And then he's going to try to launch a siege against Ukraine sur um, and surround Kiev and get Kiev to surrender. Now, if you look at the map here, you'll see how close Kiev is to Belarus. And like I mentioned, 
they've been station stationing all their troops in uh, uh, Gommel. So I want to just show you guys how close this area is to Kiev. Okay, it's only a hundred miles from the Gommel area. Okay, Gommel itself is only 120 miles from Kiev, all right? Um, but from the actual Belarus border to Kiev, you're looking at only about 50 miles, okay, in a straight line distance. So it is my opinion that what they're going to do is they're going to cross through the Polesia area. Polesia, Polesia. This is a huge swampy area here. A lot of... Uh, peat bogs and and very uh um deep wetlands okay a lot of deep wetlands in this area very similar to the boundary waters in minnesota but just much much larger okay and so that's why they're waiting for the ground to freeze because if they're going to cross through this uh wetland area with equipment they need it to be pretty solid so it is my opinion that what they're going to do is they're going to come in from two sides, they're going to first, after the, the Air Force, the Russian Air Force peppers Ukraine and hits all the critical targets, they're going to send their ground forces in for Kiev. They're going to try to surround Kiev. They're not going to go into Kiev because they know that Kiev is a city and they don't want to get involved in urban combat. So they're just going to move their forces in and surround Kiev and prevent Kiev from getting reinforced by uh, Ukrainian ground forces or, or Western forces. And the way they're going to do that is they're going to move in from Gommel. They're going to split their forces. Some of the forces are going to come in uh, on the east side of Kiev, okay, on the east side of the Dnieper River. They're going to come in like this. And then some of the forces are going to come in around the Chernobyl exclusion zone. They're going to come in from the west. And they're going to hit Kiev from the west. So it's going to be like a two-prong attack. You're going to have some forces coming in from the west, some forces coming in from the east. And that's going to work to surround Kiev, okay? You also have some forces up here in Bryansk that can uh, easily move down towards Kiev or down towards Gommel and reinforce these forces, okay? But that's what they're going to do, guys. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. They're not just going to go after the, the cultural areas because that really doesn't give Putin what he wants. You know, they made it clear that they want Ukraine not to be able to join NATO. They never want Ukraine to join NATO. So the only way to do that is to change the leadership, to uh, change the um, government, okay, and put in a, a Russian-friendly government or just to annex the entire country as part of Russian territory. So um, they're not going to waste their time just going after cultural areas like Kharkiv or Luhansk or, uh, you know, some of these other areas here. They're, they're going to go all the way. You know, if they decide to invade Ukraine, they realize that if they invade Ukraine and they fail, it may be their only chance to do it. Okay. So if they go in, they're going to go in, they're going to go all out. They're not just going to stop at once they get to a certain point they're going to say okay we're done you know we got we got some of the russian speaking areas no they want the leadership to change okay so like i said they're going to launch a siege against kiev all right putin is smart and he knows that uh this is the best way to do it and uh he doesn't want to lose his men he doesn't want to lose his troops so he's going to launch a massive airstrike campaign in the first couple of days. In the first two weeks, he's going to launch thousands of missiles across Ukraine. Uh, he's going to be hitting all kinds of targets, power plants, airports, runways, uh, bridges, um, military bases, ammunition depots. He's going to hit all that with his air force and with surface to surface missiles. After he does that, uh, simultaneously while he does that, you're going to have Russian forces come in and conquer the entire Black Sea coast to cut off Ukraine from any kind of uh, help through the Black Sea. So this way NATO can't come in through the Black Sea and reinforce Ukraine through the Black Sea. So they're going to conquer from Odessa all the way to Mariupol. They're going to conquer the entire Black Sea 
sea coast. And uh, after the bombs fall and they hit all their targets, that's when they're going to launch the ground campaign. They're going to go after Kharkov, which is a Russian-speaking area. They're going to uh, conquer Donetsk and Luhansk. They'll probably get Sumy um, and some other uh, areas here in uh, far eastern Ukraine. And then they're going to launch their siege of Kiev. Okay, They're going to try to surround Kiev. They're going to move their forces in from the west and from the east of the Dnieper River and surround Kiev to prevent any kind of ground reinforcement of Kiev. They're going to have the electricity cut off, the heat cut off, uh, food, water, everything would be cut off, and eventually Kiev will surrender and then it'll be checkmate. That's how I think it's going to go down. Now, the wild card here, and this is a huge wild card, is number one, uh, how many weapons the U.S. and NATO supply to uh, Ukraine. Number two, are there Patriot missiles set up? If the United States has uh, set up Patriot missiles already, then it's going to be a lot harder for Russia to uh, take out uh, a lot of the uh, critical bases and and uh, power stations that supply power into Kiev. And in my opinion, I do believe that they already have Patriot missiles set up over Kiev. And I do believe they're trying to protect the main uh, power station, which is right just to the north of Kiev here. There's a, a big hydroelectric uh, power plant there uh, right on the northern side of Kiev. There's also a nuclear power plant just to the south of Kiev. There's a few international airports. So my guess is they do have Patriot missiles installed in Kiev. And their goal is going to be to protect Kiev and, and keep the power going, keep everything running. Um, now, there was some interesting news a few days ago that the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions were deployed, which is a big red flag that war is imminent. Now, the 82nd and 101st Airborne, their main mission in any conflict is to uh, secure strategic locations. And um, the 82nd and 101st Airborne are always one of the first troops to be deployed in any kind of conflict. They were deployed in World War II, in Vietnam, uh, Korea. Uh, Desert Storm, Grenada, Panama, all major conflicts that we've had in the last 100 years, the 82nd and the 101st Airborne were always the first ones to go in. So the fact that the 82nd and the 101st Airborne uh, have been um, uh, deployed and they're going to be going to Europe soon is a big red flag. But their job would basically be to secure critical uh, sites around Kiev to protect the power stations, the airports, you know, uh, all the important sites they're going to try to protect before Russia can get in and control them, okay, before they land with their power, paratroopers. And uh, that's a, a wild card. The West sending weapons in is a wild card. Also, the guerrilla war uh, that the Ukrainians would launch against the Russians would be huge. But like I said, I don't think that Russia is going to try to uh, conquer all this big land here. Okay. Ukraine is almost 800 miles across from one side to the other. It's like going from New York city to, uh, Chicago. It's a very long, um, 700 miles or 750 miles across. So Putin's not going to move his tanks and equipment, you know, three, 400 miles and expose himself in open terrain. Uh, like I said, he's just going to cut off the black sea access uh, move in and capture some of the uh, Russian-speaking areas, and this would divert the Ukrainian forces to multiple locations, multiple fronts. They would have to be fighting in multiple locations, and then simultaneously he would launch a siege of Kiev and try to shut off all the supplies to Kiev and, and uh, eventually try to get Kiev to surrender. And that's how I think it's going to go down. But you guys let me know what you think. Uh, just wanted to do this video. That, that's what I think is going to happen. Like I said, wild cards could be uh, guerrilla warfare, uh, weapons being sent in, and Patriot missile systems. And also, um, if P 
Putin starts to get impatient and he tries to actually go into Kiev and there's a lot of civilian casualties, it is possible that the West could get involved and then it could escalate into World War III. But that's how I think it could go down. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. I'll keep you updated on the situation. Take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.